better. You're watching the Aussie BIM Guru. Today I've got a tutorial that's aimed again towards Dynamo beginners. Today I'm going to be showing you a really handy workflow that a lot of people actually use when they're learning Dynamo really early. In this case, we're going to teach you how you can use Excel data to create sheets in Revit. It's a really handy workflow that you'll be able to put in use straight away on your projects and it's pretty hard to make sheets manually again once you know how to do this. Anyway, today I'll be using Revit 2021 and its inbuilt version at the time of this recording, which is Dynamo 2.6. You will need some custom packages to run this. Um, in this case, I'll show you roughly how you can install them. Uh, but in this case, I'll be using Rhythm and also my own custom package, Crumple. Anyway, let's get started. So before you begin jumping into Dynamo, in this case, it's important to go and populate some Excel data. We're gonna use this in order to instruct Dynamo how to number and name the sheets it creates. Excel's a really handy program for when you're really quickly trying to enter data. It's usually much faster than entering data in Dynamo manually by creating lists. So in this case, I've got an Excel file and I've made two columns. In this case, the first column is my number and the second column is my name that these sheets will be given. It's really important to understand too that numbers in Revit are technically text in their data type. They're not actually numbers. So we're gonna read these values as text in Dynamo as well, because remember sheet numbers can have characters in them that aren't numerical, such as A, B, C. So as a result, overall, both fields are actually text. Okay, so you can see in this case, I've just populated row by row, some numbers and some names. Um, one little trick in Excel, if you're struggling to type in a number that needs to hold some zeros, for example, if I go 0, 0, 0, 1, I press enter, it just makes it one. To fix this, just in this case, put in a single apostrophe, triple zero one. When this is read by Dynamo, Dynamo will ignore the leading apostrophe. Um, so you can actually create sheet numbers in this way. But when you're done, um, just take note of the name of your sheet as well, because we're gonna have to call on that worksheet um, and then just save your data somewhere on your computer. In my case, I'm just gonna save it to my desktop and call it sample data. And you can leave it open in the background as well. Now we're in Revit and we're gonna be creating some sheets. It's important to take note of your title block or title blocks that you um, can use. In this case, I just have one title block um, called title blocks A1 metric. So what I'm gonna do now is boot up Dynamo from the Manage tab, and we're gonna begin building this script. Now, the first thing I'm gonna do is actually just start retrieving my Excel data, but to run this script, you will need a couple of custom packages. Um, so I'm just gonna go, in this case, to Packages, search for a package, and it should bring up the Package Manager. And you can just search for two packages in this case. Now, I already have them installed, but the first one is called Rhythm. Uh, we're going to use this in order to ex extract our title block with a drop down. Um, usually, title blocks belong to a much wider category of family types, but um, John Pearson, who makes this package, actually made a special node that will only collect um, the objects of title block. As well as this, um, I'm going to use Crumple in this case to use the final node that will generate sheets. Um, there are some other packages out there that can do this. Um, I just use my own uh, because I find it the easiest to do this way. Okay, so we're gonna begin by extracting our Excel data. I believe this is under import, export, uh, data, import Excel. And this is a pretty useful node. You'll be using it quite a lot in Dynamo because of how versatile Excel is for data entry and data analysis. So I'm gonna firstly get a file path in this case. And I'm gonna to browse to where I've stored my Excel file. Now at the moment, the object type that we're using here is actually a file path, not a file object. So we're gonna to need to convert this using a file from file path. So file from path. This is actually gonna convert this path into a file object that Dynamo can read as an actual file object itself. If you're ever not sure of the data type that something is, just look for type and look for this type node with this blue crosshair. And you'll be able to see that in this case, the file path is a string and the file is a system.io.fileinfo object, which is actually what this node expects. You can always use queues as well from the names on the inputs and the outputs. Usually if they match, it's probably correct uh, in the data type. So in this case, we're going file to file. Now we still need to also specify the sheet. So in this case, I'm gonna look for a string input. And this is gonna be my sheet from Excel. In this case, I'll just call this sheet one. And we can see that it runs straight away because by default, there's some values here being populated. One of them is, is the file being read as text or strings? 
The other one is, are we showing Excel? So in this case, we actually do want to read as strings and currently it's set to false. So I do need to get a Boolean toggle and set it to true and make it be read as strings. Currently it's showing Excel. So if someone didn't have Microsoft Excel open, Dynamo would open Excel and show them the worksheet. Um, typically you would probably for this workflow want to say true, but if you did say false, you won't see your worksheet in this case. So if we say true, we can see Excel opens up straight away and we can see the data. And the reason this is quite useful is because you might wanna make some changes to Excel whilst you're running the script. If you're running from Dynamo itself, we're gonna be running from Dynamo player. So it's actually more appropriate in this case not to show the Excel data, but I'm gonna keep it open just so in this case you can see the data um, and we'll look back at it in a few seconds when we do some data manipulation. So in this case, our data comes in the form of sublists, in this case, rows. So what we wanna do first is remove our header row. We don't wanna see that because we're not gonna make a sheet with the number and the name, number and name. So we can do this using a drop items. Um, and in this case, we're gonna drop one item from the top of our list, which in this case is gonna be our first sublist, which is number and name in one list together. I believe you can find that in this case under the list uh, modifier and then we find the drop item node. I won't always show you where the nodes are in the list, only when I think they're a bit harder to find, but you will find as you use Dynamo more, you'll probably be searching less and less um, through the browser or the library as we call it. So I'm gonna get a number node and I'm just gonna drop one item. So let's have a look at what's happening when we do that. So we can see now, see how the first row is 1001. If I make it zero, we're dropping nothing. If I drop two, we're dropping an extra row. So we just wanna drop one in this case. The problem at the moment is we want to read our data in lists by name and number. So in this case, we actually want to flip our lists so that all the numbers are in one list and all the names are in another. Fortunately, there's a really easy node for doing this. It's called transpose. And essentially it will take the index indices of each item in each sublist and make them a new list. So you want it to have an equal number of data values in all your sublists. But if you do, then it just successfully flips your data. So now we have one list with our numbers and one list with our names and they're parallel to each other as well. So the sheet and the name will correspond to each other, which is fantastic. Um, now I do actually have a custom node I built especially for this task because I just found I was doing it so often that I just wanted it in one node. Um, it's in my custom package, uh, Crumple, and it's called Kickflip. And it's essentially just gonna take data and kick out the number of rows you specify and then transpose. So you can always use that as one node if you wanna do it more directly and save a bit of space on your canvas. In this case, I'll just use the out of the box nodes for this step. So now that we have our data in this format, we need to break it apart into names and numbers. I might go and take the node that we're trying to create the sheets from. So under crumple, Revit, sheets, we'll get the sheet uh, create node. So in this case, we need a title block type names and numbers. So in this case, we know that our numbers are sitting at index zero and our names are sitting at index one. So we're gonna use the get item at index node to call on specific indexes out of a list. First of all, we need our names, which are at index one. So in this case, I'll get a number node. And in this case, they're at index one. And we know that our numbers are at index zero. So we are gonna put them sort of upside down just so that the wires don't have to cross each other. And this will now successfully break those two sets of data into individual lists. Now from here, I'm gonna go into manual mode so I'm not running constantly. I'm gonna connect this to my names and this to my numbers. So for each name, we have a number. The last thing we need is a title block type. Now I've built this node so that you only have to supply one title block type in this case. So to get the title block types, I'm just gonna search for title block. And in the rhythm package, there's a special node that dedicates itself especially to extracting title block types. Usually to find a title block, you would need to use the family types dropdown instead. But as you'll see, there's a lot of family types that you have to search through. And obviously a lot of these things aren't title blocks. So you run a big risk that you're gonna go and pick something that's not a title block, which means the script won't work. The great thing about this node is it limits what you can pick to just title blocks, which is fantastic. So at the moment, if I run this script, it should actually just be done. That, that's how to do it without building it for Dynamo Player, but we are gonna do it for Dynamo Player after. So first of all, I'll just save my script 
and I'll run. And you can see here that it's created in this case a sheet with a name and it corresponds to the properties that we took out of Excel. So we're pretty much done at this point in terms of getting the script to run. So it's a really handy little script, especially if you have something like a document transmittal or a list of sheets for your project. You can turn this into a set of sheets rather than manually setting them up one by one. Um, it's much faster. And if you can build your company system to always have the same structure of document transmittal or have a way to predictably say where the sheet number and name should always be, you can actually build a workflow in your company to automatically generate sheets on any project from the document transmittal using Dynamo. But that's a little bit harder. It involves a little bit more thought. So what we're gonna do now is set this up for Dynamo Player. So we have a sheet report that says what happened and we have an error report that the node generates. Um, I'm just gonna create a watch node and I'm gonna connect a watch node to the sheets and a watch node to the errors. Now we're not actually gonna be watching these inside Dynamo. We're gonna be watching these in Dynamo Player. So I'm gonna right click this and make it an output and likewise here. And I'm gonna rename them just to say sheets created and also uh, error report. And we'll now see these in the interface of Dynamo Player. I'm also gonna to have to create some inputs. So I'm gonna make an input for my title block types so the user can nominate their title block. And I'm also in this case gonna create a file path uh, input as well. And I might say Excel data path. So the user understands that the file they're being prompted for is of the, of the type Excel. I'm gonna make the sheet name an input as well. And I'm just gonna call this a sheet name in Excel. So the user can probably understand what's happening now because remember, usually when you build a Dynamo player script, it's for people that don't understand terms that you would use in Dynamo. So you have to be careful with how you name your input so the user understands what's going on. We could also create inputs to control whether the user sees Excel or if you read as strings. In this case, I'm just always gonna read as strings, but I'm gonna make the show Excel uh, an input as well. And just call this show Excel. And beyond here, we just wanna say how many header rows we have. I'll just call this header rows to remove. How many, how many headers, header rows to remove. So again, making it really clear so that a user understands what the point of the input is um, without having to understand like a term such as index, for example, or drop because they probably don't understand what a drop is. Um, so if you said the number of rows to drop, they might not understand what you're trying to tell them to do. Now you could always change these numbers as inputs as well. And just in case your numbers and names are in different columns in Excel, it's really important to remember though that even though you understand indices and you understand that lists start at zero, people in your um, running your script probably won't understand this is how lists work. So what you might wanna do instead is take one away from the number. So we're actually gonna say which column does the data occur in. In this case, I'm gonna say column two and column one instead of index one and index zero. I'm gonna move these just a little bit to the right and we're gonna introduce some minus nodes as well. And from each of these values, as you can guess, we're gonna take one. So I'm gonna add one minus node here and one minus node there. So in this case, we're sort of learning a lesson about building scripts that users can understand. I'm just gonna, in this case, minus one from each of those. And for this one, it's gonna be our, our names, I believe, and our numbers. So we're gonna right click our input and say column number or names. And the user will probably say that the first column is column one. So this is definitely a, a much safer assumption to make. Of course, you can train your users how to do this as well. It's really up to you which, one, which way you prefer to manage scripts in your office or how many users you're supporting. But there we go. So at this point, we have a script that we can run in Dynamo Player. So let's close Dynamo. I'm gonna undo so that all the sheets are no longer there. And I'm just gonna boot up Dynamo Player. And I'm gonna to go to the inputs of the script. So make sure that you've located where your scripts are. Mine's on my desktop. I'm gonna open the inputs and we should see those inputs and outputs we specified. There we go. So we can see our data. So we can go and pick our Excel data. We can say what the worksheet is. In this case, it's sheet one. We can say whether we wanna see Excel or not. Maybe in this case, I don't wanna see Excel. So I'll just say false. 
In this case, we're going to drop one row and our columns are in uh, column two for the names and column one for the numbers. And remember, not the indices, one less. So, and we're also just going to pick our title block type and you can see the drop down comes through to Dynamo Player and then our outputs. So if I run my script, I can see in this case that I've created all these sheets and I have no error. Um, what if I run it again? So let's just do the same thing, but run it again. So in this case, we do actually get an error because there, were, there are already sheet numbers that have these numbers in the model. If some of them are present and some of them aren't, we should expect to get a partial creation and a partial warning. So in this case, you can see we've created four sheets that we still have an error. So in this case, um, you could process this data a little bit further to make more human readable messages, such as four sheets succeeded, eight sheets failed, uh, because a user probably doesn't understand what a traceback error is. And in this case, they probably don't understand what strings are, lines are, exceptions. It's not a human readable error. Um, so there are some things you could add to the script to enhance its quality. Uh, but in this case, this may be enough uh, for your deployment. So hopefully this was a useful way um, to learn a little bit more about how you can mix Excel and Dynamo and also get a little bit deeper into Dynamo in your learning journey. So there we go, um, a nice handy little tutorial and not too hard as well, but it teaches you a lot of valuable concepts along the way. I hope you found this useful, especially if you're a beginner in Dynamo and definitely let me know if you wanna see more beginner content. I know that a lot of my audience is expert focused, um, but I do like to sneak in some beginner content every now and then to give you somewhere to start. Anyway, if you're not already following and subscribing, uh, feel free to do so, and I look forward to seeing you in similar videos in future. Thanks. Take care. Bye.